27 points for him. LeBron Bowman as the Lakers take an L here, 128 to 115. 27th win for the Pelicans. They shoot 52% overall. The Lakers shot 54%. And we'll get to some numbers on this in a minute because Ingram, James, and Kuzma did their thing. The other guys did not. Here's LBJ postgame. The last few years, you know, everybody's so accustomed to the, the losses that I'm just not accustomed to. I'm not accustomed to it. I would never get comfortable with losing. So, you know, losing game one to Houston, it feels the same way as losing game 59 in New Orleans for me. That's just how I'm built. That's who I am. Is basketball, is that the most important thing? Why are we doing this? You know, is this the most important thing in your life at this time? You know, you give it all, you know, to that game. And then if you feel like you put it all into it, then you have nothing to kind of look back on. You're able to do other things. If you, you know, if you're able to, if you feel like you're giving all to the game, then you can go do other things. But if you feel like that you're not giving as much as you can, then you can't focus on anything else. Interesting. Okay, so with LeBron James saying, I'm not comfortable losing like this, is he saying that his teammates are comfortable losing like this? What do you think? <laughs> seems like you got, no, 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 like you got your own thoughts there. He would. You're the analyst. You hey, tell hey, me. hey, don't hurl me that fastball. <laughs> <laughs> don't throw me that hard. Would table. you like to take a crack at that? He's, he's saying something right now. He's If effort and, and basketball being at the forefront of your priorities, what, what he said, he came to handle his business tonight. Brandon Ingram handled his business, and Kyle Kuzma handled his business. Yes, they did. Some people didn't come to play. That's what he's saying. If you would, I'm not used to you ducking a question. I'm not ducking. Even I, you had to make me I'm not, do it. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not ducking the question. <laughs> I just feel like you had your own personal spin you wanted to put it's not on. Not about this. me, Brendan. Uh, but I will say this: that comment does point a lot of fingers at his Laker teammates. That comment by LeBron does cast a lot of shade towards some of the other guys on the team that maybe they didn't handle their business, so they didn't come with a professional type of approach tonight. Um, but. Listen, the Lakers have to shake it off. Regardless of the comments, they have to shake it off and they have to move forward. They have to win uh, a large percentage of their games going down the stretch. They have a hungry Sacramento team trying to make the playoffs. The Clippers have come out and said they're not going to tank. They're going to try and make the playoffs. So the Lakers have to really pick it up if they're going to be included in the playoffs. If they don't make it, that'll be a major failure. This will be a wasted year. Here are the stats. Uh LeBron, Ingram, and Kuzma combined for 72 points. The other nine guys that played combined for 43 points. Uh, take that for what it's worth. Let's give some credit to Drew Holiday here and the Pelicans. Talk about Drew's performance. Here. Drew has been Drew all year long. He's been consistent. He's been stable. He's been playing both ends of the floor. And he came out tonight to play and, and was ready for the challenge on a, on a Lakers team that didn't show up. So, and Drew Holiday here, five of nine from deep, three steals, seven assists. He usually huh. packs the stat sheet with love. And tonight was no exception. And you know these Pelicans were like, nobody thinks we can win without Anthony Davis. And they rocked and rolled. Now the Thunder have the most difficult schedule after the All-Star break, facing teams with a combined 572 winning percentage. Rest disadvantage games is four tied for the most, but they do have a lot of home games. In fact, the most. after the All-Star break. So we're off to OKC, where the Thunder beat the Jazz in double overtime on Friday. And there was Paul George, 45 points. The game-winning floater over Rudy Gobert deep into double OT. What a game it was. And b -Wood, what a game Buddy Heald had here. Ooh. 14 points in the third quarter, 34 in the game. Buddy Bucket showing the diversity in this game. Now, he couldn't have done that a couple years ago. He was all jump shot. Now we see him handle the ball, get into his man a little bit, and have some nice moves. Oh, yeah. Who's that he got stumbling out there? I see you, Buddy. Uh, working Abdel on Nader. Your, yeah, working on his game. Buddy's been in the lab. Uh, Russell Westbrook uh, gets it going for OKC in the fourth. New Orleans Noel with the rejection of Harrison Barnes, and Russell Westbrook is shot out of a cannon. Yeah, 40 both Thunder. nights. Russell came in with a lot of energy close. attacking on both ends of the floor. And that's what you need from the head of the snake with Russell Westbrook out there, all-star performance. Five threes, and Brendan, the jump shot's starting to come around a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah, it's looking good tonight. Now, the, the percentages haven't been there this year for Russ, but tonight he got it going. Very efficient, 15 for 30. That's the next step for Russ this year. He's averaging a triple-double. The team is playing good, but they can go to another level if Russ has this type of efficiency going down the stretch. So it's tied at 116. De'Aaron Fox goes to the line, makes the first with 29.3. And De'Aaron Fox makes the second. So it's 118-116 sack 
And the Thunder uh, down two here. Jeremy Grant is going to miss. The Thunder get it back. Westbrook is going to drive, and he is called for an offensive foul. Dante, is that how you saw it? That's exactly how I saw it. I think that's a big play coming down the stretch to be able to take that charge to make a winning play and, and, and not bail him out with a foul. B, would you agree? I agree. I thought it was a charge as well. And listen, the Sacramento Kings are going for this last playoff spot. Buddy Hill already told you. He'll bet his house on it. They're going to get that spot. Any man willing to bet the house, hey, you got to believe him. You got to know they're going to come out there with a certain type of intensity. That's cool. He's got enough money to bet it because he can buy another one. Uh, Sacramento three bails <laughs> in this game. Uh, as Paul George missed that three that would have tied it, Sack is three games over 500. Bagley gives him 19 and 10 off the bench. Paul George, after the 45 point performance on Friday, four of 19 and 14 points. Here's Buddy Buckets after the win. One of the most improved players in the league. The race for eight in the West looks like this. The Lakers are three and a half games out, Brendan. Yeah, the Lakers, uh, they got some work to do. And this Kings team right now, they're right where they want to be coming down the stretch. The Clippers are obviously trying to hold on. Spurs as well. But those four teams, that's, that's where it's going to be. Two of those teams are not going to make it. I don't bet against LeBron James often, so I'm going to have faith. I'm going to I'm going to have faith, Laker Nation, and say that LeBron will find a way to activate playoff mode. Is that what he said he's going to do? Whatever he said he's going to do, ratchet it up and get those Lakers in there, and maybe the Clippers fall out, and I guess the Kings. Dante, you played with LeBron as well. Your call. I think LeBron is activated right now, and as he said tonight, it's getting the other players to be available to play on a consistent basis and give that playoff performance coming down the stretch to get them into the playoffs. Who getting in? I think the Lakers get in. It's hard to bet against LeBron okay. James. All right. Uh, we you don't want to get that call tonight, huh? You want to get that text? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they get it. The way, I think including the Blazers buzz killing the Sixers in Philly. Look at Brooke Lopez here. How Holy dare ball. you get in my poster, Dario Saric? And by the way, Brooke Lopez taunted him after that, too, which was cool. And then Zach Levine had a career high as the Bulls stunned, yes, the Celtics in Chicago. We'll be right back. LeBron James and the Lakers looking to ride that momentum of their comeback win over the Houston Rockets on Thursday night. They're playing against an Anthony Davis-less New Orleans Pelicans. Presented by State Farm, it's a shooter Saturday. Chris Miles here with 3D and Karan Butler. Pass the clock. Go. got an imaginary one hey, right there. There you now. go. Karan, you get it too. Here you go. No, I don't pass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to pass. Come on, if you're talking about yeah, pass, pass the clock one more. There you go. Oh, look, there you go. Oh, there we oh, go. Now you're yeah. ready. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm the one passing the rock to these Smart guys. Man. You know, the next two hours, next three hours, that's what we're doing on this show. But we got some updates for you around the league. Anthony Davis out. And James Harden looking for an update on him as well. And he is officially out. So James Harden, you know, riding that 30-plus point streak right. in 32 consecutive games. He's out against the Golden State Warriors. Anthony Davis out against the Los Angeles Lakers. Speaking of which, here's head coach Alvin Gentry on playing without Anthony Davis against the Lakers. With all the drama that's gone on between these two teams, do you need to say anything to the locker room in terms of keeping them focused and keeping the emotions out of tonight? Heck no. I mean, it's just a regular season game. No one cares about, you know, it's, a, it's one of 82, you know, so uh, I don't see anything that's going to uh, be exciting about it other than to play on the court. You know, I, don't, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't see it's it, just a regular season game. I don't know, you know. To me, I, I think it, it's, it's, it's very insignificant, really, anything that happens uh, other than the play on the court. Did you like uh, just the first half last night? It seemed like it was kind of what you guys want to see as far as moving the ball and just the way that you guys played. Yeah, I thought we I thought we played a really good first half. And, you know, from the, the ball moment standpoint and everything, we shot the ball well from three, and then obviously uh, we struggled the second half. You know, we made eight out of 16 from three the first half and didn't make one. We were 0 for 11 the second half. So uh, turned the ball over too much. You know, between the offensive rebounds and the turnovers, you know, we gave up 45 points in uh, 
uh, 44 points in those two categories. And usually when you're creeping into the 50 point range in those, you're going to struggle and have a tough time winning, regardless of what the score were or what was at halftime. Can you come decision, at the decision on AD is that a team decision or a secure decision or how do you have to come? It was a it was a team decision, but we've we've talked to him along the way. I mean, I think everything that has happened has been totally transparent. Uh, I think he'll tell you that uh, any decision made by the team, uh, we sit down and we talk to him about it, and so uh, that's the way it was made. But it was a team decision, yes. And this was made in advance, coach. This decision to rest him for tonight's game. Yes, it was. If you're Looking along the lines of having any significance that we're playing the Lakers, no, it, it, it had nothing to do with it. It was done. It, 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 we were playing, uh, I'll give you guys a name that you won't know anyway. If we were playing the Baltimore Claws, okay, we would sit him out that game too, okay? Is this just back to back? Go back and look that up now, Jimmy, okay? <laughs> Is it just not playing him on back to backs? Is that uh, the decision that was made, not playing him on back to backs? We're not playing it on back to back on this, this situation right here. We on, you didn't want to see him. Uh, it's not JaVale McGee. He's scared of JaVale McGee's. You know, uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to take a look at that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but, but to see AD play, Alvin. You guys holding him out. I don't, I don't get this, man. It's a long flight. We'll, we'll pay for your flight back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay for his flight back. I got enough money to pay for his flight back. I'll put him on South, I'll put him on Southwest, you know. That's like $69, you know. He doesn't want to stay. It's Mardi Gras. He doesn't want to go He can't handle Mardi Gras, okay. I, I, know, I know him. He can't handle Mardi Gras, okay. <laughs> So Alvin Gentry kind of sidestepping the questions about Anthony Davis not playing tonight against the Lakers. We know what happened on Valentine's Day with the, the, the sore shoulder, and then he was listed as questionable for this game, now sitting this one out. But, Karan, let's go back to on this very show, you said that Anthony Davis, anywhere he gets traded to, would be a rental. Then during All-Star Weekend, Anthony Davis was again on game time with Casey Stern and, sa and said almost the exact same thing to Casey, like, look, my free agency, wherever I go, you know, I'll be there for a year, then I'm going elsewhere. So what's, what's changed in that situation? What can we expect when the summer comes for Anthony Davis? Well, look, I talked to a source close to the situation. And that's why I knew the mindset and, you know, for the foreseeable future, what it looked like. The landscape for him to, is to have two destinations. And I think, you know, paired with Kyrie Irving in the Eastern Conference, somewhere will be one. And then obviously, you know, uh, going to the Los Angeles Lakers. We can't just overlook that because we've heard the Lakers. You said pairing with Kyrie Irving in the Eastern Conference. That feels new. Yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. And when you talk about the assets that Boston have, that they can actually go out there and acquire him. And you heard the soundbite of Anthony Davis said, look, I never said that I wouldn't want to play with the Boston Celtics and yet alone, you know, play with a uh, top tier guy on that short list. When you talk about superstars in this game, like a Kyrie Irving. His dad made that statement, but he never made that statement. So with that being said, you know, that Eastern Conference is extremely attractive for to landing, you know, a Kyrie Irving and Anthony Davis combo. But, you know, most importantly, I think that he wants to exist with LeBron James in a Laker uniform. You know, it seems as if things have gotten very interesting since Anthony Davis signed with Clutch Sports. And we have some news tonight about another potential free agent in that same class, not this summer, but next summer. Draymond Green also has signed with Clutch Sports 3D. What do you make of this situation? Of course, Draymond not on the level of, let's say, Anthony Davis and what he can force in free agency, but how does this change the landscape going forward of how we view teams coming together? Uh, I don't think a lot, to your point, Chris, that we're not going to put Draymond on the same level as, as KD and, and from that standpoint, but we know that Draymond's had a relationship with Rich Paul and Clutch Sports for a few years now with the uh, HBO thing that they've been doing. But it just makes it just makes things real interesting that now when he does become a free agent, he can say, hey, LeBron's here, maybe AD's there, maybe there's other things there that makes the conversation more interesting. But then he has a chance to go home and say, now, Rich, I hear you saying this, but you mean you want me to leave Steph Curry? You want me to leave KD? You want me to leave Clay?" And I know we're proven, have an opportunity to possibly win back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back championships. So that, to me, Karan, would make me say, I'm going to listen, but I don't know how much I'm going to listen to that, knowing what I have in front of me to leave that to go see 
Well, LeBron, I love him to death, but he's getting a little bit older. I know AD's had his little injury situations. And wait a minute. If LeBron's dribbling, I don't, I don't think I'm the same effective guy like I'm the same effective guy with these other guys over here. Yeah, and I, I think to your, to your point is you look at the basketball component of it, but I think guys are starting to look way beyond the basketball component of it. When you're talking about longevity in another space and guys making a seamless transition into the corporate space. So you talk about the shop and the show that they have with HBO and you talk about all these different other entities that they've been able to, you know, build and enhance. I think guys are looking at those platforms and saying, you know what, I have a personality. I seen LeBron make that seamless transition and we can u utilize him as a vehicle to go into these corporate spaces. And I think that's the sales pitch that Rich is bringing and it's, it's real. Cause seeing is believing, like you see the real sales pitch and guys are starting to believe in that and I think it's great. Speaking of which, at first things first, you have to handle business on the basketball court. LeBron James and the Lakers able to get back to 500 with their comeback victory against the, the Houston Rockets. Here's Luke Walton ahead of tonight's game against the Pelicans. Hey, Luke, when you watch the tape from the, and the difference in the first half and the second half and just the small lineup working from the last game, what are the things that you think are most sustainable from that as you now uh, push towards these final games? Uh, the... the Effort, the edge we were playing with, uh, the togetherness, those are things that uh, when we've been good this year have been a, a constant for us. Lineup wise, uh, with the, do you like how the starting lineup has been playing generally with this new group? And what are the things that kind of make it distinct in, in the way the NBA is now? That, to say the last part. Just, of that. What, what do you think the things are that makes that group distinct with how big it is, and sort of what, what does that enable you to do with the starting lineup? Well, yeah, we like the size of it for sure, uh, Reggie. Um, you know, is he hit it. You know, some more threes for his last game, but getting that, you know, that knockdown shooter out there. Um, is helpful and then uh, you know the lineups will you know they'll, they'll change as the, as the season goes and as the games go um, and like I tell our guys all the time it doesn't matter who starts you know it's go out there and play well and you'll be in at the end of the game or you'll help the team win um, and, and that's the more important you know the important thing than who's in the starting lineup. How different is prepping for New Orleans when you know that Davis isn't going to play like tonight? Um, the, the prep the, the personnel, the, the play calls, that changes a little bit. Some of uh, where our focus would be changes. Um, but we need to have uh, the right mindset and play with the right edge tonight because we've we've proven to ourselves throughout the season already. You know, this is the NBA. Everyone can play. And, uh, you know, we've lost to, to teams that, you know, we feel we shouldn't have lost to. Uh, and he's been at home. So uh, whether he plays, doesn't play, uh, these are NBA guys playing on their home court. They're, they play hard. They had 71 points in the first half uh, last night up in Indiana. So uh, they just beat. Uh, they just beat up on uh, Minnesota and OKC right before the break, and you know, so these guys are very capable. You, you all have hard jobs coaching in this league, but um, have you thought about what Alvin, uh, how this season has gone since you know the, the trade deadline or leading up to the trade deadline? How, how the season has changed completely? Um, I. I I, Alvin's a good friend of mine. I, I want him to succeed, but we have a lot going on that we're my my uh, my focus is on our guys and what uh, what we need to do to try to get to where we want to go. What they need to do to get to where they want to go. It's going to be a tough road ahead. Lakers 29 and 29 on the season. They're behind the Clippers, the Kings, Spurs, Jazz, all kind of lumped in there trying to fight for that final seed out west. Not going to be an easy road with 24 games left. 3D, what do you see? Well, we know the Clippers, uh, Tough Juice, made their last trade to kind of maybe limp their way out of the playoffs. But unfortunately, guys like Montrez Harold and them, they're playing solid basketball. They don't know how to play one way. But let's face it, the Kings really want to get in and the Lakers really want to get in. Now, how that unfolds remains to be seen because you're saying to yourself, does LeBron have enough? Well, he had his little break. He's already said he's going into playoff mode. But are the guys around him ready for playoff LeBron? Are you ready to make those shots? I saw the other night where they struggled in the first half mm. of making shots, and they finally made some shots in the fourth quarter. Defensively, they got the stops they needed. But now, what is that magical number now with 24, 25 games left? Is it 16 wins? Is it 17 wins? You almost have to wait, uh, play mistake-free basketball as you finish up the season, knowing you have a young Sacramento team like, we really want to get in. And I give Steve Ballmer, you know, the owner, a lot of credit was here the other night saying, I want to make the playoffs. I want to make the playoffs. I don't care about that projective uh, first-round draft pick.
But deep down inside, he cares. Yeah, he cares. <laughs> <laughs> and like you said, 3D, like the margin of error is so slim. And you look at, you know, the fifth spot with 20, 25 losses because the, the loss column is extremely important when you're right. thinking about the playoff race. And then the, the Lakers being 10th at 29 losses, and you said, you know, 24 games remaining, this being one of them, that number will roughly be 16 to 17 wins. And LeBron is all in. He's activated. And I feel like they have the core nucleus, but they can't afford any injuries. Right. And that's the thing that's been their Achilles heel all season long. You know, f no fun attended when I mentioned Achilles heel, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's just been that situation where Rondo, he's available, he goes out. Uh, LeBron being injured for the first time in his long career. Alonzo Ball still not available. Brandon Ingram coming in and out with ankle injuries and little knick-knack things that's lingering. So those guys need to be available for them to make a strong push. Well, you mentioned Brandon Ingram, and I think of Reggie Bullock as well, who's coming in providing outside shooting. Look, Reggie Bullock, 7 for 14 in his last two games. He's only played four games with the Lakers. Um, and Brandon Ingram, averaging career highs in, in points and field goal percentage. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, is that enough? Chris, the match is in the, in, what, if, okay. what, if, what if we traded you to the NFL Network tomorrow and you had to learn all the NFL players? I see what right. you're saying. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. As much as I love Reggie Bullock, he's a professional, tough juice, but it's hard to come in and learn to play. To play with LeBron overnight, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, look, look, that's what we're asking him. And, and he, yes, he can shoot. Yes, he's going to play hard. He's going to do all the things they need to do. But we're talking about LeBron. LeBron, when, he, when LeBron says, I'm going into playoff mode, it's a totally different mode. You have to shoot better, pay attention to detail. Everybody has to help the helper. Every little thing, because after last year, if I'm not mistaken, is the worst position he's ever had. Was, I think it was, uh, he had the fourth seed. They went all the way to the finals. All those other years, he was first, second. So now he's asking LeBron to come from eighth or seventh in the Western Conference with a team that's never been there before? We're asking a lot. So that's why I'm saying, are these young guys really, really locked in and understanding when he says playoff mode and what that really means? Well, looking at a guy with acquiring Reggie Bullock, I feel like he's the addition or one of the additions that's desperately needed for this Lakers team because he's capable of making shots. So all he has to do is line up on that perimeter and spot up and be available and ready to catch and shoot. And I think that he's going to provide more real estate for LeBron to go downhill, penetrate in the paint, uh, Rondo, Brandon Ingram to get into there and mix it up, play the in-between game. And if he's able to do that consistently and defend – they, you know, they have a realistic shot at, you know, pushing the 7 to 8 spot. Certainly a lot uh, going on with the Lakers and see if they can pull out a win against the Pelicans. We got 12 games on this great Saturday and some notable stars out of this one. Anthony Davis with that shoulder injury. James Harden with the Drive head injury. In. Also, pay attention to Carl Anthony Towns. You know, he started his career playing his first 303 games. Out for a second consecutive game involved in a car crash on Thursday. Had a concussion. Ah, so we got to right. keep an eye on right. Carl Anthony Towns. Make sure he's okay for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Rules as they face the Milwaukee Bucks. Hey, game night Monday is always big here on NBA TV. The 76ers will take on the Pelicans. We get to see Luka Doncic take on those LA Clippers at 1030. Of course, coverage begins at 730 with the Auto Trader pregame show. You're watching Game Time Live presented by State Farm.